Okay. <coughs> okay, good afternoon and uh, welcome to this uh, well, it's a resume session 12, Transport and Infrastructure. But it's also been described as session R4B, but um, essentially um, last week when we um, were dealing with, tra with um, transport matters, we didn't get to the the infrastructure part of the agenda. So the part of the agenda we're going to use today um, is, the, is the latter part of the Session 12 agenda, which relates to um, uh, policy ID 1 infrastructure and um, policy DM 23 on community facilities. <coughs> okay, um, well, I think everyone here is, is, is familiar from um, previous sessions. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll briefly run through the, the um, um, usual housekeeping matters uh, for uh, anyone observing who hasn't been to other sessions. Um, should the fire alarm go, please um, exit via the main staircase you came up or the staircase in the, um, the room beyond. Um, please turn off uh, or put to silence any mobile phones while we're in session. Um, there is a webcam broadcast of this session and the microphones are linked to the webcam, so please use those uh, for the participants when they're speaking. <coughs> okay, um, the, um, so the, as usual, um, uh, so I, I won't do, well, I, I will do introductions, I forgot, I forgot to do it this morning, but uh, we'll, we'll do it this afternoon just for the benefit really of, of the webcam, I think, more than, more than anything, but I'll, I'll start with, with, with the council. Good afternoon, Rob Jarman, Head of Planning and Development at Maidstone Borough Council. Mark Hedgerton, Planning Policy Manager, Maidstone Borough Council. <coughs> Andrew Thompson, Principal Planning Officer, Maidstone Borough Council. Megan Thomas, Barrister for Maidstone Borough Council. Um, sorry, James Bailey, Maidstone Borough Council, Development Manager. Rebecca Driver for Headcorn Parish Council. Gary Thomas for CPRE and... Uh, Roger Vidler for the Best and Burnham Society and as part of the coordinating team. <coughs> Peter Cooling, coordinating team. Okay, so we're going to look first at um, um, issue four, whether policies ID 1 and DiEM 23 are justified, effective and consistent with national policy. I'm dealing first with um, policy ID 1, infrastructure delivery. <coughs> Um, there was a supplementary um, um, agenda, was, well, well, an advised agenda was issued, I think, uh, um, some, some time ago because the, um, <clears throat> um, there was an error in the original agenda in that um, it had been taken that the council was proposing a change to remove uh, what's called the priority lists from um, this infrastructure delivery policy. <clears throat> um, but other than that, though, that was recommended to committee. The, the members decided that they priority lists for um, uh, infrastructure um, um, would be retained and therefore the um, um, agenda was revised to reflect that um, and, and question 12.22a um, asked if the council could provide supporting evidence to justify the infrastructure priority lists included in policy <coughs> ID1 criterion 4 um, just to explain what these are <coughs> provide that when um, the, um, the adornment is being proposed um, and there is uh, uh, an issue of, of competing demands for delivery of infrastructure usually on, on viability grounds when there's an argument that um, um, development cannot provide all the uh, infrastructure uh, items which um, may be um, <coughs> desired um, then there's, uh, there's a list of the order uh, of priorities in which they, those um, infrastructure contributions will be sought by the council. Um, and it starts with <coughs> um, <coughs> residential development, starts with affordable housing, then transport, open space, public realm, health, education, social services, utilities, libraries, emergency services, and flood defences. And for business and retail development, um, the order is transport, public realm, open space, education, utilities and flood defences. <coughs> um, but it says the list serves as a guide to the council's prioritisation process 
or this is recognised that each site and development proposal will bring with it its own issues that, may, that could mean an alternative prioritisation is used. <coughs> okay. Now, the, the Council has, has um, provided a written statement and um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lengthy kind of history to these, um, the use of these lists, which I think goes back to um, an audit commission recommendation which in 2005, um, and that from 2006 onwards, the, the Council has been using a, a, a ranked order of infrastructure priorities, although that's changed over the years. <coughs> um, so the Council evidence goes through the, <coughs> um, the reasons for that and the, um, the particular way no, no, um, it's, it's, it's for some reasons under each heading um, as to um, essentially who's responsible for those and why, why they are in the position they are on the list. <coughs> and I think just to, I'll just read out the, the Council's summary, which is that the, <coughs> the Council's viability evidence base confirms the local plan is viable and deliverable. This is being evidenced through delivery of development in accordance with policy requirements. It is recognised that on occasion specific issues may threaten viability in some cases. The Council considers it important to set out its priorities for Section 106 negotiations in these cases. This nonetheless is a guide to the Council's priorities and the policy allows for flexibility to be applied where appropriate. Um, the proposal is based on local planning infrastructure evidence base and the Council's strategic plan and have been agreed by councillors following significant consideration over a number of years. While it's understandable that some infrastructure providers may wish to see their own areas of infrastructure given greater priority, the Council must consider these issues in light of evidence as a whole. It's therefore considered the list meets the soundness tests. <coughs> um, okay, I've got a few supplementary questions then uh, about this. Um, I think, firstly, firstly I'm not in. in um, entirely clear as to whether any of these items um, will be covered by seal payments in the future. Are, are, do, any, do any of these items come out of the, the order because they'll be funded by a seal instead? Um, it's quite possible, yes, that certain um, infrastructure types, um, certainly where they relate to um, not just site-specific infrastructure but more strategic infrastructure, could come out of that list. Um, but there's always the potential that um, individual sites may generate the need for that specific infrastructure type on a site-specific basis. I think the... Um, I want to understand how this priority list works with the... Um, works with the infrastructure delivery plan when that has these um, classifications of particular items of uh, infrastructure as um, uh, critical, essential or desirable. Um, how, if, if, an item, if, um, if an item is, is critical in the, or essential in the um, such a delivery plan, but is, is, is not at the, the top of the priority list, or is, is how, how other ones, how, how would that be dealt with? I think um, that could be one of the factors which would mean an alternate prioritisation would be applied in that case. Um, there are a number of critical schemes. There are also um, schemes, as you say, which are, are not critical. Um, it could be one of the factors considered um, on a case-by-case -case basis. It also occurs, occurs to me that the, the origin of this list probably kind of, kind of predates the, um, the seal regulations on, um, on, on the necessity of, of requirements and that you, um, you, you've, got, you've got another test you know, to um, apply, so certainly under, under the kind of desirable heading, um, whether, whether something that's desirable is also necessary in terms of the, of the regulations. 
I don't, I don't think that affects the, that this actual policy word is such. It, there was a couple of proposed changes the council has um, suggested to the, um, the policy. Um, first change 57 and 58. One of which, hang on, oops. I think it was a gold Yeah, this reference to, in um, proposed change to criterion two to the um, section 106 tests, um, it occurs to me that, that that might need some explanation because I, I think that you know, the, the lay reader trying to say what you know, just sees a reference to the section 106 tests and when there's nothing in the um, in the um, reason justification about that. Um, might wonder what they are. I think um, paragraph 20.4 and the reason justification for ID1 does, oh, does right. set out okay. the, um, the test. Yep, that's, that's fine. <clears throat> okay, right. So, yeah. So, I mean, we have, so you have to pass, you have to pass the, um, the test necessity if you're requiring the. Um, that infrastructure, um, but if the argument comes back that the viability reasons that um, um, can't be funded, then <clears throat> essentially the council is then making the, the, the decision to say that um, um, it, in, in that particular case it isn't necessary. If it's um, that must be assumption, or, or it's going to be provided by some of them, some other means. That's correct. Yeah. Um, so potentially it could be provided by some other means or it could be, uh, say if it was a pro rata contribution, it could be a, a lower contribution in that particular instance. Mm. Right. <clears throat> I mean, the, I suppose the concern of um, um, some providers, particularly for new providers of um, particular services, um, would, would be concerned if, if they're always on the bottom of the list and if, you, if, if, it, if, it, became, if it was a regular recurrence that you never got to the bottom of the list. Um, what, what, is, what is the actual experience of, of cases kind of where you've, um, if things have dropped off the list? Of, uh, um, can you give kind of examples if you've been operating this for some time? Um, as to um, what happens in practice. Yes, sir. I mean, um, I, we've had a number of cases where we've used this. Um, Maidstone Studios example was one um, where viability showed that only a certain proportion uh, of um, contributions, section 106 contributions, could be delivered. And then um, we took a report to members on the basis of the viability appraisal that had been appraised by external consultants and was deemed appropriate. Um, and by having the priority list in front of members, it set a clear hierarchy where those monies were going to go to. There were competing demands. There were educational contributions. There were transport contributions. There were affordable housing contributions because it was a housing scheme, an enabling housing scheme. And there were education contributions. This set a clear hierarchy um, that allowed members to make decisions that had been agreed by them previously. And it set a very clear hierarchy and understanding for officers to lead that. And also for um, even the applicants drew our attention <laughs> needlessly to the list um, to say where our priorities would rest. So it gave a consistent um, approach to decision making. And that's just one example. We've used it on <coughs> numerous examples um, around the borough as well. I think, by and large, though, it's important to emphasise this is somewhat exceptional in that 
the overwhelming majority of the sites that we see coming forward through the local plan are meeting all their infrastructure requirements. Um, so it does demonstrate overall the plan is, is viable and deliverable. Uh, and this is just for those specific instances where we do have particular viability issues um, and does just serve as a guide in those circumstances. Okay, okay so officers recommended that these lists be um, deleted and so what, what were the, the particular problems that w which officers was, were seeing with, with having a list? Um, as I understand it, I think at, at the time of submission, um, the, the justification for the list had not been developed um, or set out in a particular paper as such. Um, so I think it was on that basis um, that it was a sort of precautionary approach. Um, however, you know, members were clear um, that this was important, was an important element of the plan, um, and on, on that meeting instructed us to um, develop the evidence um, which is now being provided through the uh, written responses. Okay. <clears throat> Um, okay, so this issue was raised by the AUMB units where they're, they're seeking basically an addition um, to the list, trying to, uh, seeking to add um, contributions to um, maintenance of boundaries and public rights of way due to increased footfall um, with the AUMB. Um, and say so they're not are here to argue that, that further. So I think we'll, I'll deal with that with the, um, with the council giving response, and, and I think we'll deal with that in, this, in the same way as we other other A and B representations last week. Um, but the other um, um, statement's also been put in by Headcore and Parish Council, um, which again relates to the interrelationship of the local plan um, with neighbourhood plans, when the um, saying that the neighborhood, Headcore Neighbourhood Plan has its own uh, prioritization or own priorities uh, for infrastructure delivery um, and, and which um, <coughs> have been developed in preparation of the Neighbourhood Plan. Um, and um, a mismatch, well, they're concerned about mismatches between their priorities and the local plan priorities. Um, Dr. Driver. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Um, the issue that arises, I think, is twofold. Um, one is, as you mentioned, the interaction between the prioritization list and neighborhood plans, and that occurs in two ways. Um, firstly, this, plan, uh, this policy is proposed to be a strategic policy within the local plan, so any neighborhood plan that ha is coming forward is forced to prioritize um, infrastructure in the way set out in, um, in the, the list within the policy wording, regardless of what infrastructure demands may be necessary mm. within their local, um, local community. That sets out some particular challenges vis-a-vis -vis whether or not a neighborhood plan can be judged to be sound um, if given the importance of infrastructure provision underpinning the definition of sustainability within the MPPF, um, you've got a mismatch between the, if you, uh, the Maidstone level infrastructure priorities and the um, local infrastructure priorities. It also means by having a set list um, whereby you go down the list of priorities. Um, inevitably, in every community, you're going to be getting the priorities wrong because this is an average list, not, not a focused list. Um, so to give you an example of why kind of having this list as a strategic policy enforced um, and used for deciding planning permissions may give problems. Um, as you will be aware, sir, in Headcorn, um, we have significant problems with a uh, sewage system overflowing at times of heavy rain. Um, that's between 20 and 25 millimeters of rain. 
um, admittedly in a short space of time, and it occurs roughly once every 18 days on average during the year. Obviously, it's bunched um, over sort of winter, autumn, and spring <laughs> rather than summer, but on average, it's once every 18 days. So we're not talking a one in a hundred year event here. Um, based on the uh, advice of Mr. <clears throat> Jarman, um, we commissioned Sanderson's consulting engineers to look at the pipework through Headcorn Village. Uh, what we find is that there are 15 pipes in the village that are already at insufficient capacity. That includes nine locations on the main distribution network, um, which combined are associated with 432 linear meters of pipe. There are 14 pipes with backfall, there are 74 pipes, which is 60% of the network, where um, the pipes are not self-cleaning. And in total, there are six pipes where all three of these problems are in evidence. Um, even Southern Water's own sort of modeling suggests that at times of heavy rain, sewage comes out of the manhole at Moat Road um, in Headcorn. Um, we did an extensive consultation exercise on infrastructure within the parish and infrastructure needs. Um, more residents in Headcorn rated sewage as a problem than rated it as acceptable. And 60% of businesses within the parish saw it as a constraint on future business expansion. In other words, it, um, this is a constraint directly on supporting growth and innovation because it's, it's constraining businesses within the parish. Yet under Maidstone's prioritization list, it will come right down at the bottom rather than right up at the top of the problems that you want to solve. In contrast, affordable housing, which is at the top of the list, um, if you use um, Maidstone's Schmar estimates, um, and look at estimate, use that to derive estimates of the number of emerging households and households falling into need within the parish who would need affordable housing. What you find is that given vacancy rates within affordable housing in the area and given the fact that parish already has or had at the time of the 2011 census 119 affordable housing units it now has more than that in fact you would find that there, there would be an excess of 50 places over and above the estimated need so while affordable housing may be a priority for the borough, it is not a priority for the parish. Um, and yet, you, you end up with a situation where, under this policy, infrastructure will be mismatched compared to what is actually needed on the ground. Um, so I think the concern is that um, having a set list with no flexibility to say, unless a neighborhood plan has identified an alternative prioritization, um, you end up with probably the bad outcomes throughout the borough. Headcorn will not be unique in having different priorities. The thing about an average is it takes extremes, it sort of, it doesn't mean that it's going to be right in all locations. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say was um, Headcorn Parish Council would undoubtedly support the proposed change in wor wording um, for PC um, 58. However, we would like, or they would like to see it um, sort of strengthened further with respect to the definition of what nearest point of capacity means. Um, one of the problems within Headcorn Village is that actually as I detailed earlier, some of the main pipes within the village that take the sewage um, from an individual development to the pumping station are at, already have insufficient capacity. <coughs> now, the pipe closest to the development may not. Um, we'd like to t see two things. Firstly, 
that capacity is measured to the pumping station so that it's clear that you're going to be able to get the sewage to where it needs to be treated. And secondly, that capacity is measured so when is that, it's... Is that, is that pumping station or treatment? Works. Well, um, in Headcorn's situation, it's, it, it's the pumping station then sends it to the tr treatment works. Mm -hmm. As I understand it, mm -hmm. the pumping station currently has sufficient capacity. Um, obviously, if it didn't, then it, maybe the, the best thing would be to get it to the treatment works, uh, and then you know you're safe. Um, but um, the, second, um, the second change would be to measure capacity when it's raining, not when it's not. Um, I know S Southern Water will say, well, um, we're not responsible for surface water and that the issue when it's raining is surface water flooding. Um, the problem is that within the village, um, there are large numbers of old houses which um, have a legal right to, um, for runoff to go into the sewage system. And indeed, Southern Water charges them for the privilege of doing this. So the idea that um, they're not responsible for surface water um, is, I think, slightly misrepresenting the system, the situation. But even if it isn't misrepresenting the situation, actually, you need, um, you need the sewage system to function regardless of the weather. It should not be a weather-dependent functioning. I'm, I'm just wondering how, how you how you do that in practice. If you, if you said you have to wait until it's raining, um, you know, uh, 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 I, I mean, how much rain, for example, you know, <laughs> and, and, and you, you're trying to deal with somebody in a, you know, a hot, dry summer or something, you might, might be you know, potentially waiting weeks or months before there's the sort of rainfall that, that you say causes the problem. My guess is that Southern Water don't wait for the development to be built and for the sewage to be flowing before they test it. They have their own hydraulic modeling. Now, they know that when it rains heavily, um, then that, that um, the sewage overflows within the village. So their own modeling tells them that that's the case. Um, so, as I said, it kind of in a one in a hundred year event, then by all means you might you, you might think well that's an exceptional thing it's not very it's not very nice when it happens but it's happened once mm. and it probably won't happen for the next 100 years when it's on average once every 18 days that's the problem okay okay so put the council then there's there's um um so there's, there's three matters then well, uh, i think one is whether the plan so whether policy needs to be strategic policy. Um, secondly, um, how to deal with this, just the, um, the different uh, well, areas which have different priorities, especially through a neighbour plan. Um, and thirdly, the suggested changes in relation to the connections to the sewage network. Yes, thank you. Um, I think um, what, what's just been presented makes it um, quite clear that ID1 does absolutely need to be a strategic policy. Um, the delivery of affordable housing is absolutely a borough council priority um, and we would not want to see that move down the list um, at, at a local level. Um, in, in terms of um, the sewerage situation, I think um, there's perhaps a bit of a misunderstanding as to the scope of this policy. As we've already touched on, it's rather exceptional in that it only crops up when you've got viability issues. It's not um, per se as an infrastructure priority list for all development. Um, and in the case of sewerage, sewerage infrastructure, um, Southern Water do not seek contributions through Section 106 agreements anyway. They would have separate legal agreements that sit outside of the Section 106 regime. So actually this policy doesn't really talk to the sewerage um, connectivity issue in any event. Um, in respect of the proposed changes, um, as you'll be aware, um, the original change, um, PC58, has now been superseded by PC137, which will apply to a specific set of sites. And all of the headcorn sites are specifically referenced in there. Um, so in our view, that's, that's um, the approach that Southern Water are seeking. Um, that's a policy criteria to address their specific concerns. 
and, um, and crucially, um, the, the nearest point of adequate capacity is to be developed in collaboration with the service provider so they're actively engaged in that process. Um, and, and we would obviously work with them um, to use appropriate conditions um, and only when they were satisfied to, uh, you know, discharge that condition. So, so, sorry, PC, so PC58 comes out altogether, does it? It's, 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 in, it's entirely subsumed in PC137. Apologies, no, it's just the third sentence of PC58. Um, set out, PC137 um, was set out in the situation update for Southern Water. Um, right, let me just get that. Submitted on the 7th of November. Yeah, just trying to find that. Oh, this part of the, was this part of the situation update, Southern Water, is that? Southern That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so this was inserting the additional criterion for the, these listed um, housing sites. Um, that um, utility infrastructure, this is, this is in each allocation policy rather than in policy ID 1. So in each... That, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. As requested uh, by Southern Water. Yeah. And in each, each policy, um, additional criteria be utility infrastructure, a connection is provided to the local sewage system at the nearest point of adequate capacity in collaboration with the service um, provider. Okay. And, um, I mean, I, I think it's just my interpretation to say what, what, what this point of adequate capacity is, so that... that um, them saying you're connecting to a, a kind of short length of adequate capacity, but then leads into a, into a, a network of inadequate capacity. But, but would you say that you know, it, it would be interpreted as, as you know, capacity as, as far as it goes, you know, as far as it's needed, or such, such as the, in this case, the pumping station? I think um, on the basis that it's to be determined in collaboration with the service provider, we would look to Southern Water to provide um, that information as to precisely uh, the most appropriate um, point of connection. Mm. Mr. Yeah, and just from a practice point of view, with planning applications, uh, we usually grant permission um, subject to inter alia a, a drainage condition, and we would say something like within the, before development starts or within the next three months, um, details of um, drainage linking <coughs> up with the nearest point and those would then be those final details obviously there are details with the planning application but the final details would be agreed with Southern mm. but that, that would be done by, by way of condition rather than the section 106 is we're talking about here um, yes that, that tends yeah to date um, Southern Water have um, sort of chosen not to go down the section 106 route but Obviously, it is open to them. Um, but yeah, but that, I mean, to be going that section 106 route, it, it all had to be sorted out before um, the permissions granted. Whereas um, conditions often would often leave this uh, as a, a pre-commencement condition of some sort. And um, okay, 
so the, so I'm the circumstances in which, in which this issue might then um, apply. So we have, we have, um, um, so you have a housing. Uh, but I mean, I mean, I mean that. Well, I think that this is a separate matter. So the the, the, the connection to the sewage system at a, at a point of adequate capacity. I mean, that that's independent from this thing about where it is on the priority list. That that's another another matter. All right. On the in terms of the priority list, then. So that the, the for, I'm trying to think of a, a, a kind of scenario which which might apply in, in, in Headcorn's case. So you you have. Um, it, uh, you have a, a site where, which, which it's claimed that there's a, there's a viability problem about um, providing everything that, that, that's been, been asked for uh, for this development. Um, because, for example, you, 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 it comes in, uh, you say, uh, you, the council says we, we want 40% affordable housing, uh, we want an open space contribution, something, something else out here, and then you get, you get to this, this point, and then Headquarters Parish Council has said, um, no, we, um, we also want s s some additional contribution, utility improvement of some sort. So this, which I think in that case is, is going to some probably going beyond what the, the development itself would require. Um, it's, it's something that the, the parish council, it, it, I mean, the parish council seems to be after, after resources to deal with it, that, that existing problem, um, because you've got an existing problem in the village, and you're, it seems that you're seeking resources are you to, you know, to deal with the existing problem rather than just providing the capacity for the new development? So I, th I think there are t two, two issues. I mean, uh, to a certain extent, if there is an existing problem within the village where additional development will make it worse, which it is in the case mm. where you've got a sewage system that is overflowing, um, then uh, kind of common sense suggests that you kind of you sort it out mm -hmm. in order to make the additional development workable. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the priorities that we put in place um, for the village, utilities, particularly sewerage, was, was, was number one. So um, if, if a developer needs to dig up the entire sewage system in order to replace it, that that would be a public good from the point of the, the parish mm -hmm. um, while prioritising additional affordable housing might work for the borough, although, uh, as you know, I have significant concerns about the sustainability of that given, for example, location of headcorn relative to secondary schools and job opportunities and all those yeah, yeah, yeah. those sorts of things that speak to social sustainability. Um, our second priority is education and particularly the expansion of Headcorn Primary School, which is at capacity. So in order to have more development, we need to expand that capacity. KCC are in the process of, of doing that, but we don't want to see that fall off the list. The next priority is public realm, specifically around road safety priorities, parking and connectivity. Again, it's about making the village in particular work when you're adding in additional priorities, uh, additional development, so you've got more um, constraints on the network. So in some cases, such as sewage, it is to a certain extent remedial, but just because it's remedial doesn't mean to say that if you add in additional development, it won't make it worse. Um, if I could um, have a comment on the way in which the planning process for individual applications seems to work, um, I'd like to note that 497 dwellings have been given planning permission within the parish since the start of 2011, and that not one of those planning permissions, including the 220 dwelling which, uh, dwellings on site H137, um, have led to any agreement with Southern Water that would sort out the situation in Moat Road. In each case, um, the kind of point of adequate capacity has fallen significantly short of sorting out what is actually the problem within the village. And that's why I think it's really important that it's defined as getting the sewage to where it's going to be treated 
even when it's raining, rather than the current system. Um, I, I recognize that the current system is, it, it, it is the custom within the planning universe. Um, it's just as an outsider looking at the system, it doesn't seem to be working. So the local plan and neighborhood plans provide an opportunity to address these sorts of problems um, and indeed have an obligation to do so if they are to be judged sound because provision of infrastructure is a very important segment of the definition of sustainability within the MPPF. Um, if the system isn't delivering as it is, then um, something additional needs to be done. I think the problem is that we're dealing specifically with Section 106 contributions because that's, that's what the policy is about, and, and they're governed by um, statute, not, not just, it isn't just, um, well, not just by regulations on statute, but it's, it's certainly by statute regulations. Um, and trying to, you know, um, trying to use these, I mean, to raise resources to deal with those, those sorts of problems could be in conflict with the, with the statutory tests and, and, and the, the, the policy can't over override what the statutory tests say you can, you can ask for from, from um, developers in that particular case. Um, Sorry, if I could yeah. say, if, if that is the case, then surely if you've got a situation where <clears throat> the system can't cope, that should be seen then as a constraint on development mm -hmm. um, because um, just saying, oh, well, it's too much for any individual developer to sort out, um, so we're going to add it in anyway and make the situation work mm -hmm. worse, then, then that seems to be completely counter mm -hmm. to what the purpose of planning is. Um, should be, and indeed, as I mentioned earlier, the definition of sustainability. I do understand the kind of issue that you mention about Section 106s versus other ways of dealing with things, but nonetheless, as I kind of indicated when I started going through the top priorities within Headcorn, the priorities we've identified are about making Headcorn work with the new development, mm. not about trying to impede the new development. Yeah. I mean, presumably on, on each of the applications that, that's come forward then, um, they, they, well, they must be referred to Southern Water and, 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 and Southern Water, um, uh, do I take it, you know, did not object to, to, uh, to these. And that, the disagreement then is, is on, is on the, the assessment of the problem, I suppose, because you're saying the Southern Water haven't assessed this as a problem that the headquarters consultants have assessed it at. Uh, I presume Dr. Driver would uh, disagree, but I, I think the, the main point of difference is that, um, if I may say, Headcorn Parish Council say that any um, significant new residential development will have a severe detrimental impact on the sewage network, where Southern Water disagree. And usually, well, not usually, all the time through their own legislation, they deal with the issue of the extra um, um, demand on, on their network. Mm. Sorry, if I could, sir, one of the problems that Southern, is that Southern Water don't see surface water drainage as mm. their responsibility. Mm. And that's where the, where the problem lies, because actually surface water is and historically has always been allowed to um, run into the, the network. So they're, they're, they're sort of measuring capacity at a point when the thing that they don't think that they have responsibility for um, isn't there. But unfortunately, um, in the real world, it is there. Um, and, that's, and that's why it's really important that within the changes... Um, to the policy work, um, provisions for the individual allocations, um, that the point about how capacity is measured um, is, is sorted out because otherwise, it, 
I think it was Stalin that said, it doesn't matter how they vote, um, it's how you count them that counts. Um, this is a situation where it, it's how you measure it that's, go, that's going to be important in terms of delivering good outcomes. When you've got a situation where 60% of businesses say that sewage capacity is a constraint on their future expansion, we're not in a situation where it's a small problem um, for the village and indeed the, the economic sustainability of the parish. So what, what you're seeking in, in, so the, in the, that additional criterion in the, in the application policies, and, and it's probably too late in headquarters any for most cases because the, the permission's already granted, but the, um, for the, those cases where it isn't yet de determined, um, it's the definition of, of what adequate capacity means, essentially. And uh, that, I, I, is there, a, is there a, um, a, a simpler form of words which, which would cover the, the point um, of what adequate capacity, how to, how to define it? Adequate onwards capacity to discharge uh, safely. Well, yeah, but I mean, that, that, that doesn't really mean take any further. Any, any, any further. I'll just, just point out, this is wording suggested by Southern Water, yeah. sought by Southern Water, so it obviously works from their perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you just need to seek their views on you know, dabbling around mm -hmm. with it. Yeah, further. well, these are all post changes which people can, you know, views can be, um, be consulted on in any, any case. Mr. Mr. Bailey wants to <laughs> I'm just going to add in, so I think of most of the schemes, obviously you're aware of the lead local flood authority that came in some time ago that deal with surface water. New schemes aren't dealt with on combined systems. Um, they're dealt with in terms of greenfield runoff rates. A lot of the sites in Headcorn and Stablehurst are greenfield runoff rates. Um, and actually a lot of the applications have gone um, a long way in terms of trying to substantiate, because it's a concern that's raised with members, in terms of actually supplying a lot more detail in terms of trying to come up with studies in terms of where capacity can be increased mm. to mitigate their own impacts. And actually they do that by improving sections and stretches <coughs> or pipe work up to manhole covers. So I think the applications have gone a long way to substantiate this and to say, um, for Headcorn Parish Council, to say that obvi obviously you know, would not take Southern Walls, don't take into account combined rates. Well, no new housing development discharges to a combined system anymore. They have to deal with the SUDS issue. They deal with the lead local flood authority. They deal with Southern Water separately. We haven't had objections to these schemes from either the LFFA or Southern Water on any of the schemes coming forward. And it is up to the developers to mitigate their own impacts. Which well, well, I think in, in relation to the surface water from the new schemes, I mean, I, I think it's, it's long been established that you don't you know, add, add those into combined sewers. The, 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 what Dr. Drive is concerned with is, is that where you have existing development discharging to um, combined sewers, if you, if you add in new sewage to those sewers, um, then, then um, that in, they need to allow for the fact that they're, all, they're, they're covering varying amounts of surface water. That's the from the existing development. Yeah. 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 But the existing situation is a bit, uh, if you start with the position that, okay, the system was originally designed for uh, a combined sewage system to serve X number of, of dwellings, um, and then you, um, you, add, you, know, um, you add to that system, it's when you, um, you use some of the capacity that may have been designed for the surface water as extra sewage capacity, um, that's when you start to get the overflows, I think. Oh. So, yeah, but in most of the schemes that have come forward, what has been demonstrated is that because they are actually creating additional capacity mm. and what they have shown in most of the works that have come forward, that they're showing additional capacity within the network. And that may be by increasing pipe work up to a small section, up to mm. a connection, and, in, and adding the manhole covers, which actually adds to the capacity. And they're showing that in outline stages. And that, so that what it's showing is, is that is actually increasing the capacity of the system at an outline scheme and then you're putting the conditions on for further details to come yeah. forward to be agreed so I'm saying in, in circumstances they are actually developers are showing increased capacity within a system taking mm -hmm. account of the concerns of the parish council mm -hmm. 
If I might just add as well, I mean, a lot of the concern here is about existing conditions mm -hmm. and uh, the existing situation. And to that end, um, both Southern Water and the Lead Local Flood Authority are working to develop separate strategies, um, surface water management plan and drainage action plans. And under that drain drainage area plan um, developed by Southern Water, they are um, installing non-return valves, they are looking to upgrade pumping stations and they are undertaking sewer jetting um, in response to these sort of issues raised uh, by Headcorn Parish Council. And I know that um, Kent County Council are developing a surface water management plan for uh, Headcorn and Staplehurst as well, actually. Um, <coughs> so there is a concerted effort to you know, look to resolve these existing issues outside of the local plan process. Well. And we also have discussed the you know, amended wording for um, the, the SP policy for Headcorn, which relates specifically to sewage network. Um, to previous session. Um, I, I mean, I think it, it, it's, um, I, I mean, it, you can't, I don't think you can you know, d design a, 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 a policy to cover every, every um, possible combination of, of uh, factors like this. Uh, I mean, I think that, that the head corn, it seems that the head corn problems um, are quite well known about, you know, and, and, and um, there is now a, a, a specific criterion to be added to the allocation policies for there and elsewhere. And I can't see that the, the, an ID1 amendment um, is necessarily, necessarily going to help deal with this particular problem. Okay. Uh, Ms. Cooling. Uh, thank you. To give uh, another example, if Yolding were represented here, mm -hmm. I think they'd be somewhat appalled that uh, new homes uh, had got on the list of criteria flood defences at the bottom. Mm. And therefore, I think uh, Dr. Driver's point, and I, th uh, I think Yolding would subscribe to it, uh, the, the out is in the, this, this, poly this ID1, these criteria put forward as a guide, and there can be an alternative prioritisation. Surely it needs in there lock us for a neighbourhood plan mm -hmm. to be taken not just into account, well, I'd like to say to dictate the situation, but the neighbourhood plan needs to be recognised because certainly for Yolding, I feel, I can't speak for them, but I'm sure that would be wrong. And we've heard maybe sewage comes out, out with this policy, I don't know, but every parish will have its own priority lists for particular reasons. If affordable housing is an overarching demand of the borough, then make that an exception. Mm -hmm. But neighbourhood plans need to be recognised and given a status within prioritisation. Thank you. Okay. Um, is, uh, so is there a scope in, in that, that um, subparagraph, which in, with the subparagraph reads, the list serves as a guide to the council's prioritisation process, although it's recognised that each site development will bring with it its own issues, which could mean, there could mean alternative prioritisation is used. Um, There is, um, I mean, is, is, uh, is there a scope for um, reference either, um, either to, well, to probably specifically neighbourhood plans or, um, well, that's, that's probably, I, I, yes, I mean, I mean, each side of the proposal will be with those issues. That, I mean, it, it, it does mean that you have to look at, you have to take into account local circumstances, which, and which could be the neighbourhood plan. Um, does it need any more specific reference to neighbourhood plans? Ms. Thomas. Sorry, it hasn't, hasn't, come, hasn't come on. Is another one on? I can't see another one on. That's it. Oh, this one works, so I'm yes. glad to say. Um, I wanted to really move a little away from the, the issue that we've been talking about with Southern Water. Okay. A general comment about the infrastructure delivery plan mm. is that it contains 160 projects. Of the 160 projects, um, they're divided into critical, essential, desirable, and one or two undecided. Mm -hmm. Maidstone itself 
has no critical projects. Kent County Council has 43 critical projects, and I'm using the definition that's, that's within the document there. Yes. MBC. Maidstone has 11 that are essential. Um, it's very obvious that the vast majority of these projects will be given by outside authorities, um, which includes the NHS, for example, and Southern, um, uh, Southern Ambulance Services, mm -hmm. which are extremely difficult to put through on the, the way that the sites come forward. Um, if you take the, the, um, the Langley sites, for example, the group of sites, which are all adjacent to one another, uh, cover a large number of houses. There's five sites which actually abut one another. They sh really shouldn't be treated as individual sites, but as an urban extension, which is, in fact, the case as it's shown, I think it's on page 31 of the local plan, where the, the boundary of the urban area was run outside those five sites. So taking the, the, the section 106s on each of those five sites really is a nonsense. If you have a, the five sites in total, you are in a much better position to sort out what the infrastructure should be. And I'm not just talking about water and main utilities, but also talking about the social infrastructure, um, which has been decided on a very limited basis and really shouldn't be. Um, the other aspect that I think is very important is one, as one of the transport issues. I won't go over the road transports or Mount McDonald's way of getting buses uh, through the system. What we're really concerned about is the fact that the, um, as, as far as this is written, the integrated transport is reliant to some extent on walking and cycling. <coughs> The very large majority of the roads just outside the urban area have no cycle paths at all. Everybody either has to walk in the road or they have to cycle in the road. And one of the things I think that is important is if we're going to start increasing cycling, then that has to be treated quite differently. There is just one cycle development I'm aware of, and that's loose. There is a loose area where there's a, a cycle path added to an existing footpath. Um, it's an area that needs to be developed if there's any chance of cycling increasing because I think the statistics are, and I've seen two figures, every mile driven in a car, if a cyclist going the same distance is 17 times more likely to be killed and uh, another figure is 20 times more likely to be killed. So if you're starting to encourage people to leave their car behind, you are essentially putting them in a very dangerous position unless, unless you actually put in a proper cycle pass, of which there are very, very few in Maidstone, certainly in the rural areas. And the rural <coughs> roads cannot accept cycling or walking except in very dangerous situations. And I think that needs to be addressed, and it's, it's a major task to do so. Yeah. I mean, the, the council has prepared a walking cycling strategy. Um, which, which presumably is looking at these, these matters. That's right, yeah. There are, there are a series of schemes around the urban area. In addition to the loose scheme, there's a, a new cycle lane proposed at Hermitage Lane, uh, another cycle lane at um, South East Maidstone. And um, the purpose of the walking and cycling strategy is to look across the borough as a whole. And there are a series of schemes in there to um, improve connectivity, um, not just between settlements, but also, crucially, to, to transport hubs as well. Um, in the rural areas um, and obviously we'll be looking to deliver that um, alongside the, the local plan period. Well we'd be very interested in hearing what the... Well, so it's, a public, it's a published examination document isn't it? It's not the walking and cycling strategy. Mm. And for instance the, um, the cycle way that we are proposing with regard to H110 connects up with the site to the immediate west of that but um, that's all on the website. Okay. okay. Um, come back to the point about neighbourhood plans then. The, the, um, is, so I put the question again. Is, is the case for referring to neighbourhood plans as one of the, the factors to be taken into account um, in relation to that, um, uh, that essentially the alternative priorities? 
I think um, when it says um, each development proposal will bring with it its own issues, um, I think it's implicit there that if there's a neighbourhood plan that talks about this particular issue, that would be one of those issues that could, could weigh in the balance. Does, does uh, well, I'll take on a moment, does a neighbourhood plan have a, a policy set out the same way, a kind of priority list in the same way, or, or is it, are, yes. Okay, in the case of Headcorn's um, neighbourhood plans, the wording of the, uh, of policy HNP 30, priorities for infrastructure spending in Headcorn is as follows. Um, where there are competing demands for developer contributions towards delivery of infrastructure for new development proposals, the demands will be prioritized in the manner listed below with which ranks infrastructure types in order of importance. Infrastructure priorities for residential de development will be one, utilities, particularly sewage provision and broadband. Two, education, particularly the expansion of Headcorn Primary School. Three, public realm, particularly road safety priorities, parking and connectivity. Four, open spaces, both for wildlife and community enjoyment. Five, emergency services, including police. Six, libraries to ensure provision in Headcorn remains strong. Seven, social services. Eight, health. Nine, affordable housing, particularly shared equity. Ten, transport. Infrastructure priorities for commercial and community development will be, one, utilities, particularly sewage provision and broadband. Two, public realm, particularly road safety priorities, parking and connectivity. Three, education, particularly expansion of Headcorn Primary School. Four, open spaces, both for wildlife and community enjoyment. And five, emergency services, including police. So we've taken the prioritization list with which Maidstone has used and we've reordered it according to the priorities of the local community and um, what evidence from the local community suggests will make development successful within Headcorn by ensuring that the provision of infrastructure matches what the community needs. Sorry, if I could, just one more point. While I recognize that the wording of the policy does mention that individual developments may have particular issues, um, it would certainly be reassuring if neighborhood plans were mentioned within the policy wording um, because it, there's limited evidence to suggest that the priorities associated with them um, translate into planning policy. So I wonder if it's possible yes. just to... Uh, my apologies, Mr. Cooley. Um, I don't see that there would be significant harm including a reference to neighbourhood plans in the, in the relevant paragraph. Um, maybe we mention adopted neighbourhood plans in the list. We, we mention each site and development proposal. Maybe we could have uh, adopted neighbourhood plans prior to that. Um, will bring with itself its own considerations instead of issues that could mean an alternative prioritisation is used. So it's only a, a change to a few words there. The insertion of neighbourhood plans prior to each site and it says it, and development proposals will bring with it uh, its own considerations that could so make that's I'll, I'll just, I'll just take, no, no, that's a longer form. So it's, it, uh, what's it, it's, is this a wording up to that? Yeah, uh, we, we could do that. And then, um, and then it says it's recognised that neighbourhood plan, adopted neighbourhood plans um, each comma each or, or site, made, I think made is the word. Well, yeah, made, made, made neighbourhood plans, uh, comma each uh, site and development proposal will bring with it its own considerations, and then retain the rest of the text. An improvement, Dr. Driver? Undoubtedly, yes. Okay. Um, if we could also um, change the, how capacity is measured yeah, <laughs> in I'd, the other policy, yeah. that would be perfect. Okay. I, don't, I, don't, I can't see an easy way to do that, which, which would... Uh, 
Ms. Ms. Cooling. I think that those words are an improvement, but they're not very strong at all. Um, because uh, they just say that they're going to be a consideration. Yeah. Who does the considering? If you don't want me to go on beyond that, I would have thought it would be better to, at the end, could mean alternative prioritisation is used that takes full account of neighbourhood plans. Wow. And then I have a second point. There aren't that many parishes that can afford the money or the uh, manpower to actually put a neighbourhood plan in place and I represent a small parish that certainly cannot. Mm -hmm. uh, though we, we do declare and we claim that we have a lot of local knowledge. Therefore, it, uh, to my mind, it's not just neighbourhood plans, but full account of parish councils or, in their absence, a representative yeah. community body. Yeah. I mean, but, but, but uh, what, what do you mean by full account? Because are you saying, well, well we'll do whatever the parish council says, you know, they want us to do. Full account is, if there are any lawyers here, and I'm not, but I've used it several times in legal documents, it is a very uh, strong statement about how it has to be considered. Yeah. It's I mean, not the, an obligation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, in, because it, well, the, I mean, the, the, the two the matters here, the, uh, in, uh, obviously, obviously neighbourhood plans have a particular status as part of the development plan, and, and there, are, there was already um, statute, which, which is kind of you know, defining what the role of the development plans is. And then you have other material considerations. And, and so um, even, for example, if, you, if the neighbourhood plan um, uh, you know, kind of predates local plan, then it's a material consideration that, and you'd have to weigh any, any conflicts, for example, um, between the two. So uh, to, to introduce another form of words, I think, on, on top of the, the kind of the, the, the statutory test, such as full account is, um, becomes difficult. Considerations is, um, is already in the um, you know, practice and legislation and case law and so on. Yes, Dr. Driver. Sorry, just one point which actually probably where we are doesn't affect headcorn but might affect neighbourhood plans coming through <laughs> is because this is a strategic policy yeah. Um, we're fine because we're, we're, we are where we are, but an, a new neighbourhood plan might have difficulties departing from it. Um, so whether or not you could add in wording, um, I'm struggling to remember the exact phrasing, um, but something along the lines that have been developed through any neighbourhood plans that come forward or, or, so, or something like that, so that... It, it, it's clear that prioritizations can be can be adjusted through future neighborhood plans just to make sure that this plan is well a future, um, because a future one could could change it well it, it depends, yes depends on the how the strategic policy is interpreted be, 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 yeah. because general conformity yeah. depending yeah. on how you interpret it yeah. could mean you have to follow the list or it could mean mm. as long as you've got the things on the list and you've reordered them that's mm. fine um, it's unclear to me, I mean, I, 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 it's unclear to me whether we, a, a neighbourhood plan coming forward would be granted sufficient flexibility to reorder the, the list um, in terms of the Borough Council's response to, of course, of course, to, to any yes. neighbourhood plan consultation. Of course, this certainly comes into play where there's viability issue to if, if there's no viability issue, you, 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 don't, you don't get to the list at all. It, it, true, but um, it kind of in depending on how big or how b small the, the asks are, mm. uh, you might have one very big ask that's a very big priority that might say, well, actually, if you could sort that out, it sorts out f issues for generations to come, and that would be a huge public good yeah. and, and therefore dropping everything else off the list might might be might be sensible in terms of delivering good outcomes both for the the parish and the boroughs um, it, as I say it, it's just a, a putting the future proofing hat on it's not specifically an issue for headcorn but might be for others okay. and Thomas so I think probably that the, the actual practicalities are that um, if the policy ID one is adopted with the um, proposed change, then 
already written into it is a recognition that there will be different circumstances to take into account when a neighbourhood plan has basically said that. So, um, in other words, if a neighbourhood plan follows this plan and has to be in only general conformity to ID1, then clearly, if it's going to prioritise its own list of infrastructure, then it's clear it can do that from the actual wording of ID1 itself. So it would be in general conformity. I think perhaps we're maybe inventing or <coughs> um, perhaps being a bit um, pessimistic about what difficulties would follow. But if, if that proposed change is taken on board, I don't think that there would be a problem. Um, recreational services, do they come within one of these criteria, please? Uh, excuse my ignorance. And I'm thinking of uh, uh, even, even a theatre or a uh, concert hall or something like that. Does that come within one of those? I think um, recreation would be covered by open space. Well, open space, you want a covered space. Shut up, be facetious, you know. I mean, there's nothing here about, about community, other kind of community for the citizens, things, other village halls and those sort of things. Or yeah, they're not on the list. They're on the list. I mean, what, so what happens to things which aren't on the list? They just, they just have an automatically lower priority, do they? Or? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Was that the village halls, community halls are not on the list? Did uh, I misunderstand this here? Not on the priority list, no. Yeah. Goodness me, certainly, uh, uh, out with the rural service centres and the urban centre, that is uh, rather important, I would have thought. Perhaps even within rural service centres, forgive me. Well, what, I mean, this, you've still got policy DM23, community facilities. Um, so, if residential development would, would generate a need for new facilities or for which spare capacity does not exist, it would not be permitted unless um, new external approved facilities um, are secured. It's not at one of these criteria. It isn't, excuse my ignorance, it's not a candidate for some of these, uh, this funding coming well, well, it, it would be candidate for funding by virtue of policy DM23. It's only in cases where you get a, a, an overall viability problem that the ID1 kick, kicks in. Yeah, so, and if most developments are viable, which is the council saying that they are, then it, 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 this should be a fairly rare circumstance in any case. Sorry, just to add to that, and obviously on uh, large allocations, um, we specifically ask for new community facilities as yeah. one of the criteria. I just, I just wonder that when, if, because if it is a relatively rare circumstance that you need to, to use ID1, um, does it need to be a strategic policy? Because it generally reads like a development management policy, the, 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 most of it. it it's the, the only, the only, the only argument I've heard that needs to be a strategic policy is um, because there could be a circumstance in which um, say a parish which doesn't think it has an affordable housing need um, um, argues that a, a different priority should be applied. Um, I mean, it isn't the case that the, 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 it, this, this isn't the case where the again where the neighbour the parish is deciding the plan application. It's still all it can do is to say that the neighbour got neighbour plan says this is not important in our village. We, we argue that you want something you want something else on the list instead. Yeah, uh, in terms of viability in and around villages, I do think this is exceptional. However, my experience and Mr. Bailey's experience of dealing with brownfield sites in the urban area, such a policy helps us an awful lot. Um, 
But, I mean, I mean what's, what's the reason making for it? I mean, it's, it's, still, it's still in the plan, there's still be a policy. Does, why does it need to be strategic? I think, I think that connects um, just as uh, importantly to the first um, couple of paragraphs, which talk about um, you know, where development creates a requirement for new or improved infrastructure, developers will be expected to provide or contribute towards additional requirement mm -hmm. to a, an agreed delivery program. And I think that's fundamentally strategic. Um, and I think that's absolutely critical to the plan. Well, any more so than DM23, for example, which is a not strategic policy? I think it underpins the approach to infrastructure across the whole plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, as, as far as the, um, you know, as, as far as the, the council's determination plan application is concerned, um, all, all these policies essentially have, have you know, equal status. The only issue really about this, that, and the reason I raised it early in, in the examination about strategic policies is because of this issue between really local plans and neighbourhood plans um, of, of, uh, and the requirement for neighbourhood plans to be in general conformity. Um, so that's, that's essentially why you need to, need to actually dis distinguish them. Um, and then clearly, if you, you know, there may be some cases where you, just because some of the scale of development is such that it, 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 it becomes fundamental to the delivery of the plan. Um, but I, I'm not sure that applies to, um, to ID1. Um, following on from what Mr. Thompson said to us, um, a strategic priority is affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And there, there have been cases in the rural area um, where there is a difference um, between the borough council and the parish council yeah. about the provision. Because, as you know... But isn't DM13, or you want DM13 to be a strategic policy as well? So it's a bit of that, that covers it, doesn't it? It... To an extent, um, but perhaps I'm being too tactical, but if I was a developer and I heard the Headcorn Parish list in terms of prioritization compared to mm -hmm. the ID1 list, I'd much prefer mm -hmm. the Headcorn one because I think number one was broadband. I'd think, right, providing that anyway mm -hmm. helps, helps me save houses. The one I'd be looking for at the bottom would be affordable housing, 40%. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Sorry, if I could just say, sir, in terms of policy SS1, um, point 11 on the list is supporting infrastructure will be brought forward in a timely way to provide for the needs arising from development. So to a certain extent, um, that infrastructure needs are already mentioned within the strategic policies within the local plan. And as you say, kind of, it, it's unclear whether policy ID1 needs to be a strategic policy, particularly as the policy on affordable housing is a strategic policy, has been proposed as a strategic policy within the local plan. So, as a neighbourhood plan, you would be forced to be in conformity with that one. This, as you say, does feel like a demand management policy. Okay. Sorry, development. development management. <laughs> Okay, I think yes, Ms. Ms. I, I just wonder why in this ID1, I just wonder why the criteria are stated at all, given the discretion that's left for the council. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, but the members, you say, you say the members are uh, you know, keen on the, the priority list, and they're going to have regard to them. They're, 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 you know, having, having set out there, they're not simply going to ignore them. You have to basically have to justify something different if you. If you to, to, to change the order, there has to be a reason. Um, and, and I think, but, but probably, if you're going back to these, what was said, the original, the, the origins of this, I think, was an audit commission, obviously. Um, um, there must have been a problem um, at the time, with, 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 presumably with, with kind of arbitrary dis decisions about you know, what, 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 was, um, what was being given priority. And, and uh, more, far more likely to, you know, to just be swayed by just a particular argument to committee and, and, and you end up with inconsistent decision making. And, same thing. Okay. 
So I think it's also worth mentioning that in terms of SS1, the references to uh, infrastructure required from the development, but um, we're not in that position with ID, um, the infrastructure one policy, ID one. Um, the final uh, reference criteria five is in respect to the community infrastructure levy, which is obviously um, bringing together uh, contributions from various developments uh, and uh, validates further, uh, validates further the um, borough-wide approach to not only the priorities but also the ways in which the council will be uh, collecting for infrastructure in the future. Okay. okay, I think we need to move on because I've got um, very far through this list at the moment. Let's have a quick look. It's 12.24, so look. Yeah, these, these are, um, are summarizing, I think, um, actually, actually, let's just look at the time. But if we just take a, take a short break now, and then it's 20 to, two, to 4, I'll just, just uh, adjourn until 10 to, uh, and then we'll carry on. So, adjourn until 10 to 4.
Okay, if we um, resume then. Okay, so I'm saying there's a number of people who have, have, have raised quite kind of general points um, about, about infrastructure provision, um, in, you know, including that, 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 I mean, the general comments that um, infrastructure, you know, in various ways is, is inadequate now, um, uh, and um, you know, that, that there are certain strains and not enough has been done to address the proposed population increase and so forth. Um, I mean, the Council's response on those generally is that the, um, the infrastructure delivery plan is its assessment of the um, infrastructure requirements um, and um, that, you know, that the, what the Council assesses is needed to support the um, proposed growth. Um, there are some, some comments about that. Um, there are some... Uh, obviously the, the particular items which aren't in the plan which some people would say should be in the plan such as um, adding a theatre or concert hall um, there's another con there's, no, there's another, con another concerns about um, the um, that there are uncosted items in there I think the council responded on that that the uncosted items are typically either um, either uh, relatively small items or I think in some cases uh, are provision has, has already been made and then the matters have, have already been um, determined so it isn't necessary to um, consider future costs. Um, okay. And there are just other arguments which are generally supporting uh, Separate, separate objections to plan on the basis of the amount of development proposed. Um, and I think the other matters raised in sponsors' question we've already discussed. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to move it on to. Question 12. Um, I think. Okay, it's number of further statements made about adequacy of infrastructure. I think the main the main items mainly is Kent County Council um, continued concerns. Although they're not here, I'd like oh, to see that the the, um, the Borough Council's response on a couple of these matters. One of them is the uh, relates to Harrietsham Primary School, um, and the County Council asked that the Borough Council safeguard land for educational purposes necessary to allow the, the plan to re, um, school to expand. Um, first, the policies SP6 of the plan and the criterion identifying the provision of a, of a one form entry expansion of Lenham or, or Harrison Primary School as a key infrastructure requirement but doesn't safeguard land at Harrison for educational use. Um, So there was an inadequate infrastructure provision for Harrietsham. This, this, um, this, this is tied up with is it? Well, is this tied up with the um, proposed school for the Lennon Board location? Is that are there different alternative ways of finding this, or, or is, it, is it separate from Lennon? Um, <clears throat> it's certainly distinct from the two form entry school required to serve the broad location. Mm -hmm. um, the, the relevant um, evidence-based document is the Kent School Commissioning Plan. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you a document reference, ORD 012. Um, this was published um, earlier this year um, and set out the County Council's um, plan for commissioning new spaces um, in the borough. And um, on page 112 of the document, they 
uh, I might as well read it out. The proposed new housing in Harwichshire and Lenham will necessitate an additional one form entry primary school to be commissioned. Uh, the timing and location of this additional capacity is currently under review pending the outcome of feasibility studies to clarify the site capacities at both schools. So um, on the following page, um, they reference um, by 2018-19, one form entry at Lenham Primary School or Harrietsham Primary School. So there's clearly a degree of um, flexibility as to where that's provided. Um, since, um, and that formed the basis of, of the um, infrastructure delivery plan reference to education provision for Harrietsham um, and, and within the policy itself. Um, and since then, we haven't had any um, further feasibility work shared with us, which would um, steer it one way or the other. Um, in terms of um, Harrietsham, however, they have recently published um, a, an education consultation which indicates they are prioritising um, that expansion at Harrietsham. Um, and that's without any safeguarding of land through the local plan. Um, the site itself is quite an extensive site. Uh, only a small proportion of it is occupied by school buildings. Um, so it's quite... Yes, but uh, wasn't there the, the land at Harrietsham um, that the county council owned, which at one time was going to be in, in a housing allocation? That's correct. So um, they, own, they own the land? And they... the, I think they own land to the, um, to the north of, 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 of the school and um, the proposed allocation at, at Tongs Meadow, mm -hmm. um, they'd reached some agreement with the landowner there as some sort of land swap that would oh, right. have provided additional land for uh, school expansion of playing fields. Um, obviously, as we discussed the other day, there's some uncertainty regarding the delivery of that site. Um, is that, is that what, what they wanted? Is that why they wanted a reference to the local plan? To the, on, I believe on, so. On that land? I believe so. Right. Um, and I think, you know, it, it, it may have been a sort of convenient solution at some point in the past, but certainly the developer hasn't indicated that that land is available just for educational use without accompanying residential development. Um, so, given the sort of flexibility within the school commissioning plan, given that KCC are already undertaking consultation on um, expanding Harrietsham without any safeguarding of land. Um, I think we, we feel fairly confident that an additional one form entry should be deliverable. Within well, so, you're so you're saying the consultation is on is, is without that the the Tongs Meadowland? But it's it's not a planning consultation. It's no. an education consultation. Um, so it's more the principle of a one form entry extension oh. at um, Harrietsham. Um, but it, it doesn't, um, on the face of it, rely on um, land outside the school boundary. Um, details to be refined through the planning process, it, it, it says. Okay. So, um, are you saying then that the county hasn't done enough to justify the need for an extra land, is that the...? Yeah, that's, that's correct. They, they haven't justified why um, this additional parcel of land is required to deliver an extension um, on a fairly extensive site. Um, The overall site area of the school. I, 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 don't, I don't have the, the, the plan. They, they said they submitted a plan. I don't have that in front of me. I've got so that here a, if you'd like to. Is it, was it with the? I might have it with, with the original um, regulation 19. Yep. Yeah.
I said it's not. Don't seem to have one. Okay, can I have a look at that one then and see if we can get it, no, need to get it copied. I mean, what that seems to show is, is that there's, um, you know, the county council owns um, kind of ample land there, but it just wants a more convenient shape of place, essentially, for, um, so, so the land is closer to the um, school buildings. I think that's correct, and, and based on the fact that at one stage Tongs Meadow was in the plan, that would have seemed, you know, a, 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 you know perhaps a preferable solution from their perspective. But the alternative sites proposal... Um, had the Tongs Meadow, um, would that have used that area for part of the housing development? Because that's when, when they separated out from the county council land, that they'd have been proposing housing on that land. Um, they've rather changed their position over the years, and at times that's been um, proposed for housing development, and at other times it's been proposed for educational purposes, dependent on the potential for land swap with KCC. But as I've said, that, that's all wrapped up with the issue um, with, with Natural England and the licensing. Um, so there is a, a high level of uncertainty um, regarding uh, whether that site could come forward. Okay. And essentially, the County Council wants to use, use the local plan as, 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 as a kind of lever with it, in its negotiations with the landowner, I suppose, yeah. action points need a copy of that okay. and the the other matter concerned um, DM 23 community facilities. There was a Um, right, this is this, a uh, county council objection to the criterion of policy DM23. Um, criterion 3 says the council will seek to ensure, where appropriate, the providers of education facilities 
make provision for dual use of facilities in the design of new schools and encourage a dual use of education facilities new and existing for recreation and other purposes. Um, the um, County Council objected to that. I say it would not be effective. Let's find the... So in the original representations that the County Council has in recent years commissioned schools that contain, also contain facilities of community use, have each has been appraised on its own merits, responsive to community needs, site capacity and financial constraints. Um, the adoption of policy seeks to influence the design and function of education facilities by an authority that is not responsible for such facilities or the financial impact imposed by the policy considered inappropriate. Um, the addition of community uses may also increase the required amount of land for facilities beyond that which the County Council has requested be incorporated in site civic policies, it may result in developable area for housing, low site yield, um, could also be used as an alternative to providing standalone large community facilities detrimental to the quality and capacity of the infrastructure. Um, County Council will continue to assess specific requirements, capacity of each educational facility is responsible for commissioning. Um, okay. The Public Council response, um, they point to examples of the Council Council commission, commissioning facilities for dual use. Uh, one example being the new Langley Park Primary School in H15. Um, the policy places no requirement for dual use on development and the appropriateness of dual use can be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Accordingly, the policies can be effective. Um, I mean, that seems, seems to be the case because the, the, the policy says the Council will seek to ensure where appropriate that uh, provisions made for dual use, encourage dual use. It's certainly not, certainly not a compulsory provision. And it seems in each case the Education Authority or the Free School, wherever it is, can argue whether it's appropriate or not. That's here. That's a, re a reason to change the policy. Okay, that's the uh, only matters I have, I think. Right. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and uh, so next week we've got two um, sessions on alternative sites, uh, and then one as a run through on the uh, modifications. I think uh, um, just on overall. Um, progress on, on the plan. There's just a, a couple of things to say. Um, one is that um, I'm, 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 because of the way that some of the, the kind of key issues have crystallized over the last couple of weeks, I'm, I'm rather doubtful that we're going to be in a position um, to say that all um, the uh, kind of, uh, draft modifications and so on um, can be, will necessarily be sorted out um, before the uh, what's down as the as a, as a closing session uh, at the moment, because um, the, uh, what, what I'm intending to do is that after next week, um, I'm hoping to issue uh, some interim findings on some of the main issues um, uh, by the, the following week, and some um, you know, other changes are likely to you know, to flow from that, and there may be some other um, some additional work. Um, I mean, particularly in relation to some, some of the employment issues um, that have come up, but also some other matters as well. Um, and that which may um, you know, require some either further work or some further consideration of, of, of policy revisions and so forth. Um, so I, I don't think at the moment we're going to be in a position that they'll have a full set of, of, of draft modifications um, to go to your, your committee and on the 10th of January. But, but I think that... Um, um, I mean, there may be th there certainly may be things that can be reported to them that you know, the interim findings and, and, and things that come from that. Um, but, it, but it may be kind of one, one step beyond before we actually uh, at the point of saying that um, um, you know, the, these, these should be modifications for consultation. 
um, for that. Um, but I think we'll, so. We'll, I'm not proposing to change the uh, at the moment to change the um, you know the, the proposed hearings. Or whether we need to have um, another hearing in the new year um, to, to finalise matters, uh, we'll have to wait and see. I think now, but that's um, that's a possibility. Um, Okay. Yes, Ms. Cooling. Um, well, first of all, I think you ought to register a, a thank you for your patience uh, over the past several weeks. But, but then the question: um, Do we, being blunt, do we now have to shut up, or, in your future process, when and if, what might we compliment you on what you've done? Forgive me, or say, hey, what about this? We've got to shut up now until the report, or what, what happens? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it, there, there isn't, uh, I'm not opposing, you know, at the moment have, have um, further hearings uh, in, a, um, in advance of the, I mean, the, uh, um, the kind of draft modifications going out. Um, obviously, the, there's consultation and, and um, opportunity to comment on those at, at the time. Um, unless I say I, I haven't, haven't got into findings yet, so, so unless there's, there's something specific in those which, which needs another hearing for, for discussion or which is relevant to matters that have been raised before, I mean, the, um, then uh, maybe, you know, maybe have, have to have another hearing arranged in advance of that. But if there's something particularly specific, but um, there's nothing, nothing proposed at the moment. Okay. Okay. So thanks so much. So I'll see you uh, on Tuesday. <laughs>